Good morning, everybody. It is 8.39 on Saturday, the 13th in Tasmania, which is still the 12th in Jerusalem for another 21 minutes. So we're on the 12th in Jerusalem for a little bit longer via midnight. That could be significant. We don't know. However, I have shared in the past many posts about how I believe the actual start date for Israel was 1950. And I know people get up in arms when I say that, but there are good reasons for it. So we had, they first came into the land in 48, right? And what I'm going to do in a second is summarise a comment from a subscriber called Cosinator. Sounds a bit like Terminator. I presume he'll be back. Anyway, <laughs> very funny. Um, what I did, I, I shared some links to Gevti channel. And I said, if this 11th period passes, don't stress for now. Because... There is good reason to believe that we could indeed just be a few days out. Now, the reason I have always thought that was because Israel came into the land in 1948, right? And then there were a whole heap of agreements and bits and pieces, etc., signed in 1949. 48 was the seed planting. 49 is sort of the germination and 50 is when it began to sprout because it wasn't until 50 that the Knesset, etc. put Jerusalem in place as the capital and God installs governments, remember, and kings. He, he, he brings them up, he takes them down and it's, it's um, very strongly associated with... Uh, Nations, what I mean by that is a nation isn't a nation until it's recognised by everybody as such. Otherwise, I could call my five-acre paddock here Taswegia, set myself up as king and start a nation down here. Mind you, there wouldn't be much space for people, but you get what I mean. There are specific things that need to be in place. And as God has told us, he, he sets up kings and governments and brings them down. Clearly, the process of a nation's creation includes the formation of the government. And that never really fully was established until 1950 when the Knesset voted on a capital and all this sort of stuff that happened in 1950. So I suggest that everybody went over to um, Gevti's channel and uh, had a bit of a look so that they can understand why we've got a few days at, at, on the other side of uh, Jan 11. So somebody did, Cosmator, and he summarised everything for us nicely, so I'll read it out. You shared this link earlier. You shared this earlier via a link to the video, but I feel it is important. So I wanted to share it again as a comment within one of your posts for everyone who may have missed it. See? Read the comments. Good information comes out of the comments and this is why I suggested people go and watch this video. Brackets credit to GevT on YouTube channel. And this is great information. Jesus said that the generation, 80 years, which sees the tender fig tree, Israel, put forth its leaves brackets, by declaring Jerusalem its capital, right, putting forth its leaves. So that's, that's not a process that happened the moment they walked into the land in 1948. So I was always looking at 50. And that m maths adds, adds up much better with 50, given where we are now. Then that generation will see all the end time events pass. When Jerusalem was declared the capital of Israel on January 23, January 23, 1950, this could be the start of the fig tree generation. Leaves put forth due to Jerusalem becoming the capital. And May 14, 1948, 
was when the fig tree was planted. Now that makes perfect sense, especially when we look at Luke who says the fig tree and all the trees, right? So we were talking about all the nations and, and that in itself implies that all the nations either were going through the same process of um, coming into their land and becoming a nation, which they weren't, or it could imply that all the nations accept the fig tree, Israel, as a new nation. And that was officially 1950. You don't really call a country a nation until it's at least got a capital. I mean, everywhere I know, every country, every state has a, has a capital. <coughs> Excuse me. So why would Israel be any different and why would God run things any different for Israel? Right. So 1948 was when the fig tree was, seed was planted. January 23, 1950, plus 81 years, so we get the full 80, next to the day before it, uh, equals January 23, 2031. Israel turns 81, and this would be the limit, brackets, end of the fig tree generation because we've started the 81st year. Sub subtract seven years from January 23... Subtract seven years from January 23, 1950, and it equals January 23, 2024. That's meant to be subtract seven years from uh, January 23, 2031. That was a typo there to get you January 23, 2024. January 23, 2024 would be the last possible time for the rapture in order for seven-year tribulation to be complete before Israel turns 81 years old. My point exactly. I've been banging on about this one for about... I reckon you'll find a video maybe 18 months, two years ago, perhaps, where I started to mention this. I've always thought it was 1950. I could be wrong, but have a look at the maths. So, using the date prior to January 23rd, 1950, as the start of the fig tree generation does not fit in the timeline as of today, and that is correct. Note, the above calculations are 365 day count versus 360 per year. Only time will tell. We are in the season, even if this passes. God bless. So that is a, a bit of a summary of the channel Gevti that I said go over and watch his last two or three videos. They are longish, over an hour. Um, so that might put people off. Hence, I'm doing a quick summary here as somebody did one for me that I could easily read out without having to do the legwork myself. Good on you, champ. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how people like Reaper Man do it with 20,000 subs. I can't keep up with just a, a bit over a thousand it's it's actually quite a big job anyway i'm hoping that that encourages you guys a little bit um the latest date that i see and this really is the latest date that i can possibly see for this to start for the the fig tree generation and the seven year tribulation and all those things for us to have got that correct this is the latest date, January 23rd. That's not very far away. That's 10 days away. We have a new moon in between there, um, which could be very significant. Uh, and if you watch Gevti and the videos that I suggested, um, You'll also see that he is of the opinion that the calendar could be off by a month, and I know we've heard all this before, and that we might have an extremely high watch period between sort of the 12th and the 14th of uh, January. So the sighting of the mo new moon, and he, he said in his second last video, I think, that that... I don't know, I, I think I remember him saying it aligned with Hanukkah or something. He believed that that's where we were, were now, something like that. You'd have to go and watch the video again. I just honestly have been so strapped for time. 
that I can't always re-watch things in order just to summarise them. That's why I make the suggestion on here. But I noticed Steve Fletcher's now looking at why have we passed Gen 11, 12 sort of thing, and he's trying to pair, pair up... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Pair up um, eclipses that are coming next. In other words, matching ones with ones that have already happened. And he's sort of looking at a timeline to see if it falls on any significant dates, etc. there. Or I don't think that's going to be fruitful. Um, and I'm not having a crack at Steve in any way, shape or form. I, I just think that we're in that time right now and that we, we need to extend this watch just a little bit. Um, I don't know... If that means we extend it to January 23rd, which is only 10 days, because I, I see a lot of typology now, um, especially with the new moon that should be sighted tonight in Israel, um, as in, what are they? What, what, just hold on a sec. So they're 11.50pm. I don't mean now. I mean, up, you know, tomorrow night. It should be sighted tomorrow night. It'd be no illumination for them there now. So I'm suggesting we just keep watching. Let's look for the sighting of this new moon and see what happens through to about the 14th or 15th. Uh, and then before I jump to any of the um, sorts of eclipses, etc., the eclipse pairing, etc., that Steve's looking at, I just, for now... Um, before we took that sort of a step, I'd definitely be looking at January 23rd, 24th also, because the math for me, I mean, I've looked through the math that people have done on 48 and 49, and I've never been able to work out how they did it. It's almost like they had some sort of little secret, you know, and then multiplied all by 0.215 to get this day or something. I, I don't know, because to me, it just, this is the math. You know, you've got 950 plus 81 minus 70 brings you to 2024. When I used to do it a few years ago, I didn't sort of... I wasn't so clued in with how to watch, so I, I simply went 2020 minus... Uh, sorry, 2030 minus 7. I didn't take into account that for, for that 80th year to be completely complete, you, you need to use 81 years and then just go the day before that um anyway these are the little things you learn as you watch how, how to look at calendars you know things like uh, does it start at zero ad or one ad these sorts of things they can make a slight difference but in this case we're only looking at da you know a day difference or so so i believe as i've said before that it was 1950 because of the fact that the capital was established and all the other things that God puts in place for every other nation in the world. So why would he do it any differently for, for Israel? It says he raises up the governments and kings of nations and brings them down. So I assume part of the process of the formation of Israel, Israel would be the raising up of their government, the establishment of their capital, etc. Because after all, they're God's nation. He's definitely going to do everything right with them. So, keep watching for now, guys. Don't be dismayed. Um, don't be discouraged. This month is huge. I am very closely watching what happens at the sighting of the new moon. Then I am very closely watching the day after that, for some of the reasons that were given on Gevti's channel. And then I am definitely watching the Jan 23rd date, because the formation, uh, the the way that the Knesset established the the um, voted on the capital and all this sort of stuff was the very final step in the creation of Israel. In other words, the seed had been planted, it had germinated, and this last date was when its leaves started to sprout forth. So remember, it's by the blood of Jesus, guys. His works and his works alone. We add nothing to this equation. We are sinful, 
filthy rags sitting here waiting, waiting to be turned pure white by the works of our Saviour, the only one that is capable of bleaching those stains off our dirty clothing. God bless, guys.